guys, it's Rob here with a short unedited video for you to check out with uh, just a simple, quick little thing on observations and observable evidence. And I wanted to show you the alignments that the mainstream science has made with these images of our planet. And you can see that this is Pangaea. Um, it says 200 million years ago. This is what happened. <laughs> Well, and this is good. This is what my trolls believe. But, but look at these alignments here. This is North America. Does that even look like North America to you? Does any of this resemble? I guess Africa looks the closest. But this is their alignments. This is okay. They make an alignment like this, and and then tell everybody this is okay. Well, let me show you some simple, common sense stuff here. In science. Science is based upon observable evidence. And in science, we make theories that are based upon the observable evidence that has been collected and facts. And in science, they have rules that um, when you make a theory, it, it has to be supported by all the observable evidence that you have. And you can't, I mean, that's just the bottom line. And that's to preserve the quality of science because you can't take a theory, say you create a theory and then you, you take some observable evidence and you go, this is the observable evidence that I say supports my theory. And then you look at this other observable evidence and you say, but this does not, so this doesn't count. And, and then you can't do that. If you have any observable evidence that, that contradicts your claims, your theory is no good. It's no good. No matter how many people you've convinced, it's, it's no good. And right here, I just want to show really quick before I move on. Um, in plate tectonics, you have subduction zones. And that's where I, I claim plates go to die. That's where plates, heavier plates, according to them, slide underneath lighter plates. And then they burn up to come back as a volcano to terrorize some other group of people. And um, you look at here, this is a subduction zone here. This is a plate boundary. Nowhere should there be lines that cross over a subduction zone. It doesn't work that way. You can't have this plate going underneath this one, but yet it mark the markings match on top. It, it doesn't. You can't have that. That right there discredits plate tectonics. But on top of that, when you see a plate boundary like this, that's that according to them is a plate boundary and you can observe it you can see how wide it is you can see the depth of it you can see that this plate thickness must be around what you're looking at right here as this slides under and if that's the case then what you have next to it is the Gulf of Mexico which really isn't a giant sea or anything or a gulf or whatever whatever it's actually all whole through this plate and so is this this is even a deeper hole it looks like a reptilian eye whatever slit but if you got a hole in the plate and you've got a plate going underneath it where is it I mean think about it is there a thin layer right here of dust that that blocks you from seeing this or the burning up of this plate you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's common sense, right? Science should be also be common sense, not just some complicated stuff that nobody gets. Now back to the topic of observable evidence. When you have a planet that's covered by reoccurring patterns, the whole thing, <laughs> reoccurring patterns of the same basically the same image over and over again but they're slightly different because they'd be different layers of that image that that reoccurring pattern should become very important to you if you're a scientist because it is <laughs> it, it has to be if you have a reoccurring images of on your planet's surface it's something you'd want to look into but sometimes things are so simple that I guess science just can't grasp it when you look at this ocean bottom floor, you can see these marks right here. This looks like swirling or rotating, and this may be related to it because it's got wings or whatever.
but it also has lines, dots, that all simply come over to here, the other side of the Pacific Ocean, which they claim is shrinking. Well, what's so difficult about seeing these lines and then taking a snapshot and sliding it over here and see what happens? Is that not scientific? Is that so simple that it's not scientific? Anybody can do this. And um, if I was lying or if I was wrong, the last thing I'd tell you to do is to do your own overlays. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here is our side of the ocean. And this is the other side. These are straight on shots of each area. And even though that these lines look like they're pointing the wrong direction, they it's because of the curvature of the planet. So I'm going to slide this simply slide this area over and if I, you notice Hawaii you'll see that something strange is happening with those hot spots one they're crossing plate boundaries and two they're matching up with the features that they're not supposed to be matching up with all the way into here when I, this is what this is what started me on this whole thing, believe it or not. I noticed this three years ago. That simple. I did this. I started showing people this, and they thought I was freaking out of my mind. <laughs> so stupid. Look, even right here. Okay. Anyways, it's true. And these are the people that I know. These are the people that are. These aren't even trolls. They thought I was out of my fucking mind. Like, how, what? Okay, so anyways, you take this same image and you start to move it downwards to the, the what I'm claiming is spinning and stuff like that. <laughs> People are so weird. I'm not kidding you. I don't get it. And I was shocked. I was like, huh? I'm out of my fucking mind? Anyways, look, this is that spinning and this mark here. Um bringing them into these areas here this is the one I like the most you can see that it, it when I and Hawaii of course you can see that it lines up underneath let me lighten this just in case it might help okay here it is again you can see the remnants of Hawaii here by the way it just I don't know it's a, it's a no-brainer really so you could it's because it's a reoccurring replicating patterns what I'm claiming just to cut to the chase for some people that don't know what I'm claiming is that that I learned okay I, I'm I learned this stuff from the electric universe theory because out of all the theories I've heard it's the most realistic one and um, it goes with what our science leaves out our our mainstream science leaves out electromagnetism in explaining anything that they see and that's to be honest when I found that out I thought that was the stupidest thing anybody would do I mean why would you leave out electromagnetism when it's obviously the the main force in our lives in everything even our lives itself lightning bolts you see them they're there they're it's a, it's a big thing not not to mainstream science though that they, they have dark energy and dark matter those are the things you need to watch things that they made up things you can't see like underneath the surface of our planet there's these plates you can't see them but they're there and beyond those plates we're gonna tell you what's beyond those plates and you're gonna believe us because uh, you don't know any better but check this out here's those hot spots that they claim I'm claiming that those these are the Birkeland currents that are twisting but these are the the either the compression spots or whatever whatever I don't know this part about electrical, so I'm just may, taking a stab at it. That that there's like as the Birkeland currents twist, I'm sure that they they create their own hot spots, I guess, under compression or something. And I'm thinking that these islands form, and that's why they form kind of evenly apart like that, uh, based upon the the speed and the of the rotation and I'm guessing the diameter of the Birkeland currents would determine how far apart these islands would space out. 
and I, I'm sure that's that just seems to make sense. So as I bring this in, this part is what I'm concerned about. Following these marks across the ocean floor to this point looks pretty good. So let me get straight on shots of these areas so that we can see them more accurately. Like this. Here's that that spinning, that whirling. You can just see it. You can see the swirling right there. Does that match up with the Amazon River, I'm wondering? Anyways, um, maybe not. So I bring it in, and look, the swirling goes, you can see it right in the Gulf of Mexico. But as I drop this down, you can see that this fits in here, and they're reoccurring patterns. I need to get another straight-on shot, but you can see that now that whirling right here is fitting in here. Okay, here's another even better straight on shot of the other side of the ocean. And you can see that you can see this is going to match up with this and it's going to work its way down. So you can see it's even matching up before it gets there. see that this is taking a bite out of this and that you got this V cut and then you got uh, Papua New Guinea here with its V cut right there you can see that If you drop this, see it's moving. That's the beauty of this is that these, not only do they line up, they line up over and over again as I move them around, which this is, does not happen unless they're related. You can see that the same features that did one thing do something different to somewhere else. But you can see that um, As I bring this in, here's that lake. You can see that there is a relationship with these Birkeland currents and these marks right here, this twisting and spinning. You can see that what was what was matching winding up here, breaking apart or twisting and making these islands here, it can simply be moved down and realigned here because they're reoccurring patterns. That's the way reoccurring patterns work. See how it lines up again? They're reoccurring. They're reoccurring because these are images of a small area that's about as big as this, or as about as big as these, this area right here. And because of that, each different pattern will look different but it will line up it will still line up with these features and it does this all over this is actually rotating around so it's gonna this right here is gonna fit everywhere even in this slot right there that will fit because you can see that these are spinning and tightening and then there's a breaking apart and that's the theme a reoccurring theme of these patterns is a twisting and a pulling apart. Now look how this matches with in here. Um, this is lining up with that beveling right here. And that swirling's right here now. As I'm sure it follows 
the um, Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Here's a super close-up shot of that area right there. Here's a super close-up shot of Florida. I'm claiming Florida is uh, one image of, of the inside of the vortex that's spinning. Not Florida itself, this is just an image of it. So that's, that's been flattened and pushed to the surface of our planet. These are so close to each other that it's kind of trippy to me that nobody noticed that you know you got these lines on Florida and all you got to do is simply line them up you can go past it and line things up you can see this you can see inside of Florida how things mark up um, I had a guy that said that um, the closer you look at my images, the further they the matches are. It's not true at all. I'm showing you that's not true. You can see that this is related to this, this is related to that. It's not true at all. It gets better. But he said that because he took a guess at it. He didn't. He didn't do his own overlays to verify that or anything. He just assumed that's what would happen. Well, you know, in science, when you assume, you know what happens. You can see the slide mark here. You can see this little nipple-looking thing here, too. Seems to play into this. Being the same width and all that. You simply slide Florida through like it looks like it, it shoveled through. Actually, I think it spun through. But you can see that well, for one, the fact that, that it matches the width and stuff like that is really alarming. And then the angles here, you can see these things all play into it. Um, it made it went this way. And, it, you know what I'm saying? It might have started out from small and got larger and slid right here. And you could just tell things have pulled away. You can look at these markings even and see there's a relationship. You can see that this resembles this. Just like that. This is how science should be. It should be simple and not complicated to understand or grasp. It's just this easy. Thanks for watching.